This video is going to be about cellular organization of genetic material, the cell cycle, as well as bacterial cell division. So first we'll start with the cellular organization of genetic material. So when we're thinking about cells, it's important to remember that in our bodies we have two kinds of cells. So the first of those kinds is going to be our gametes, and then the second would be our somatic cells. So now we'll look a little deeper at each of these two kinds of cells. So our gametes are going to be any haploid reproductive cell that is formed by meiosis or the descendant of cells formed by meiosis. So we know that haploid means that this cell is going to have half the number of chromosomes as a um, normal cell within our body or as a somatic cell, which we'll see in a minute. And so that is going to be things like our sperm, like we can see here, as well as um, our eggs. So anything that's involved in the process of reproduction um, is going to be one of our gametes. So moving on to somatic cells. So somatic cells are going to be any cell in a multicellular organism except for a sperm, an egg, or their precursors. So somatic cells are going to be diploid, which means they have the full set of um, chromosomes. Uh, well, they're going to have two full sets of chromosomes. So, um, for example, in humans, the diploid number for um, a somatic cell is going to be 46, and the haploid number is going to be half of that, which is going to be 23. So our sperm and our eggs will have 23 chromosomes, and our somatic cells will have 46. And so it's important to remember that a cell cannot be a somatic cell and a gamete at the same time. So those two terms are mutually exclusive. So if something is a somatic cell, we know it's not a gamete, and same thing goes vice versa. If it's a gamete, it is not a somatic cell. So moving on to the cell cycle. So there's four phases of this cell cycle that we're really concerned with. So the first um, is going to be this G1 phase right here. So G1 is going to be when the cell is uh, undergoing a lot of growth processes and they're starting to make sure that they have all of the materials um, and all of the tools necessary to actually begin the process of DNA replication, which we have right here happening in the S phase. So in the S phase, we're going to have our um, DNA replication, so our entire genome is going to get replicated. That way, when um, the actual division event occurs, both of the daughter cells will have complete uh, sets of genetic material. So when we move on from S phase, we'll move on into G2, which is our second growth phase. So during G2, we're going to have uh, the cell continuing to grow and kind of finishing up uh, all of the preparation that needs to take place before they enter the M phase. And so on this picture, the M phase is listed as mitosis, but this can also be meiosis. It's the same process for both uh, types of cell divisions. And so in the M phase is where we're going to have our mitosis and then finally cytokinesis. So this entire ring out here shows us interphase. So that's going to include G1, S, and G2. That's all going to be interphase. And so interphase is going to be the time that's in between divisions. So enter, it's in between those division events. And so once we move out of interphase, then we'll enter this M phase right here and actually have division taking place. So moving on to um, binary fission. So binary fission is a special kind of cell division. So it's going to be the reproduction of prokaryotes or asexual reproduction of single-celled eukaryotes. So from this definition right here, we have the word asexual. So we know um, automatically that binary fission is going to result in daughter cells that are genetically identical to the original parent cell. So how this process takes place is we'll start right here with our bacterial um, chromosome inside, which if you remember, bacterial chromosomes are um, circular. And so we have this one origin of replication right here. So at this origin, we're going to open it up to form a replication bubble. And so replication will occur in both directions, going away on both sides from this replication bubble. And that will eventually um, result in uh, two copies of this genome starting to be uh, made and starting to become distinct from one another. And so we'll have the origins of these two different copies move to opposite ends of the cell. And so as they move to opposite ends of the cell, it kind of pushes the cell um, outward and makes it longer. That way, when you actually have this division taking place between those two chromosomes, we end up with two um, cells that are similar in size and have the same amount of genetic material on um, the inside in their genomes. I hope you found this video really helpful. 
All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one 30-minute -on -one appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.